So this is John Daddy, drummer for Anthrax Testament, Slayer, Volbeat, and I don't even remember how many more bands he played in, doing a playthrough of the song Angel of Death that I recorded. And this is one performance, top to bottom, no editing, nothing, and no samples. And uh, today we're gonna go from this raw recording here. To this. Featuring two really cool plugins by AIX, which if you mix drum, I advise you to get. Let's get to it. Like I said, this is one of the many songs that I recorded for legend drummer uh, John Daddy down in San Diego using, by the way, the recording setup that I set up for him. One take top to bottom on his amazing Tama kit. Uh, no edits, no sample. This is how he wants it. And I'm very happy because it doesn't happen often nowadays to record real drums, no sample. It's kind of a lost art, but perfect for the big four drumming that he's doing. Actually, I'll put his channel down below if you want to check it out. And today I'm going to show you these two plugins that really helped me uh, when I mix his drums to clean up everything and make it sound how it's supposed to sound. So we start with one plugin that is called Multiband Gate, again by AIX DSP. It does exactly what it says on the tin. When we gate real drums with conventional gates, especially toms, I want to say, but snares as well and all the other shells, it usually always tend to be a compromise between cleaning up the tracks and getting rid of too much bleed and taking something away from what you want to keep, so the actual hits. This one makes your life a lot easier. You have three bands, and for each band, attack, hold, and release. Super simple to use, and also very simple because you have a visual representation of the waveform at the bottom. So before showing you how I use this plugin, what is for me the most effective way to do it, I'm just going to leave everything as is and just remove the multiband gate off of each channel, okay? So we have two kicks. He's got a double drum. We have three microphones for the snare, we have three rack toms and two floor toms. So his kit is huge. And with so many microphones, it doesn't matter how carefully you place the mic, you're gonna have a lot of bleed because he has a lot of shells, okay? So right now I'm gonna leave everything as is and I'm just going to bypass the gate. And we go from this to this. With all the bleeds and all the mics going at all times, we lose focus and punch and definition on the kick drum. We have so much hi-hats and so much cymbals because they are close to the microphones. And we have five toms between the racks and the floor. And you can see from the track, of course, the toms only play here and there, even though Angel of Death is a tom heavy track. For the most part, like many of the tracks have only bleed and just few hits. Uh, we lose punch and definition on the snare. It's kind of a big mess. So you heard immediately how much difference does it make just putting the gates on. We are gonna solo the toms because those are the most offending one, I wanna say. Okay, lots of bleed. With this on, so smooth. And if you see my settings here, uh, this is a pretty straightforward plugin. You have your threshold here. This will decide what you trigger. And then you have the three bands here, which of course you can move. And as you can see here, I have different settings for the hold release for each band. My low band on a tom is gonna be the one that has a longer release and a longer hold because I want the low end of the tom, the tail, to ring out, while the mid band, which contains usually a little bit of bleed from the snare and maybe some cymbals as well, depending on where this band here is set up, are gonna have a shorter holder release, you can see here, and the high band an even shorter release, again, for toms. Even though I don't exaggerate this one, and I wanna uh, show you why, because it becomes a natural, and um, especially with a natural sounding kit like this one, I don't wanna get rid of uh, the bleeds completely and abruptly because then I'm 
gonna use samples or uh, later on and it doesn't matter. This drum kit needs to sound natural, okay? So I can have this, like take a listen if I put the release all the way down here. You hear it, it kind of uh, filters out the top end of the, of the tom and I don't want that to happen. So I kind of try to set it as fast as possible to lose uh, the bleed from the hi-hat or the cymbal without having that filter out top end on the tom. Still open, okay? Big difference, so pay attention to that. Let's go to the tom two because this is a, a full tom feel here. So this is the tom two. Okay, so with it. So one thing, um, you can see at the top you have look ahead, the pre-gate spectrum, just, just for the visualizer. And then we have the sidechain here, which you can sidechain it with a key input. And very important is the key listen. Look where I set it, right? This is basically the frequency spectrum that is gonna trigger the gate to open all the bands, okay? And in this case, specifically on this tom, because of the proximity with the snare, if you see this, this is a snare hit. All right, let me bypass it. And it hits freaking hard on that snare, okay? So if I didn't set this one so low, that snare hit would open the gate. Okay, so what I had to do is to bring this down to 450 or whatever it was, so it only gets triggered by the tom. Okay, that doesn't trigger. If I put it back, all right, it triggers my snare. My snare, sorry, triggers my gate. But you get the point, right? So this really helps you to focus what is gonna open the gate. Of course, once the gate is open, I don't want you to confuse this uh, with, oh, it's gonna only open the low band. No, it's gonna open the signal and then you have the three bands to, again, adjust the release of the gate for, and the attack as well. Uh, for stuff like that, I usually leave the attack pretty fast. But one other thing that this plugin has, and I'm gonna do it on, uh, the floor toms here. Again, both floor toms, if I keep it open, they sound like this. So uh, John is also left-handed. So his kit is like, <laughs> to wrap my head around his kit and the pan in when, when I mix is kinda, it's kinda funny, it's kinda tricky, but he has a ride and he uses that a lot on, on he's got two hats. So you have hat bleeds everywhere <laughs> with them because he's got two hats, one on the left and one on the right. He's got two drum kit. He basically has a, a symmetrical kit almost with the floor toms on one side. And he has this ride here, which he uses a lot. And um, as, you can, as you can hear, it, it bleeds into the floor tom mics, okay? That's normal. With the gates, all right? Notice one thing here. Notice how slow is my release and hold on these two floor toms. Because again, I want the long, uh, low end tail to keep ringing. We have an extra control here on the threshold. Uh, you can see, I, if I activate my stereosis here, you can lower or put it above the threshold and it's kind of a cushion. It gives you a little more wiggle room to where the threshold is gonna open. For example, if you have ghost notes on a snare, uh, that could be useful for that. But yeah, this plugin is great, straight to the point you have all the key controls that you need to clean up real drums, but to be honest, not just real drums. Uh, this can actually be useful to clean up vocals. If you have a noisy vocal track that you're recording in a weird ambience, that also works very well. The noise on your vocals could be, for example, a hum on the low end or some high end noise. And again, the three bands will allow you to open and close uh, the different frequency ranges independently and it can help you save a bad recording. This was the first plugin that I wanted to show you. The second one is their Dynamic EQ. It's called Drum EQ and it has been optimized for drums and not just real uh, acoustic drums. You can use this on loops and anything like that. Actually, I wanna say it's even more useful on loops when you don't have access to single files like kick, drum, snare, and hats. The layout and ergonomics are very different from your usual 
EQ. But once you get familiar with it, you realize why the layout has been done in this way. So if you see here, we have two modules. We have the octave filter and the resonant note filter. And here at the bottom, we have all the filters. And if you keep an eye here on the spectrum, you see that when I move the filter, that green bar moves as well. And you can see you have the numbers here, filt octave filter two, three, four, five, and it changes the frequency. Of course, you can also have a filters overview. These are all the filters available. And if you want to take a look at everything at the same time, you can. But in the Focus GUI, you have the zoomed in visualization with the octave filter and the resonant filter, because especially on drums, it happens often that we boost one frequency and then we want to cut an octave higher or the resonance frequency after that. Let me give you a quick example with kick. It sounds good, but for this genre, I want more top end, I want a more solid uh, low end, and I want to clean up the mid range, okay? So I'm gonna first of all find my fundamental for this kick and boost with static EQ. All right, let's see, I like 56. I'm gonna cut a little bit here. Let's say around 36. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch to the higher filter. And I kinda wanna get rid of this. I can do it statically. This alone already gave this kick drum more depth in the low end. It's more focused and we don't have this kind of honky sound in the middle, okay? Well, let's bypass it. So much more solid. Something that I can do with this, I can turn every bend into a dynamic EQ. And if I do this here and I pull down the threshold, I put back the gain at zero. Every time the kick hits, On a kick drum, I'm not sure I would want to use a dynamic EQ, but for example, for snare, definitely. We'll try to do another example. After this, I want top end on this kick. So let's try to find which filter. I kind of like this. Right, and in this case, I do want to use the dynamic EQ. I'm turning it on here. And I'm gonna, as you can see, use a positive ratio to boost it. Let's go on a busy part here. Much better, right? So let's take this drum cue here and let's copy it on the second kick drum, which is a twin of the first. And sometimes I do want to give a slight different tone, the left from the right, uh, especially again, if I'm not using samples. So in this case, I'm gonna try to do that. And let's say on this one, I'm just gonna remove something else here. All right, let's listen to the whole thing with and without the EQs. Let's start without. All right, so pretty cool. I'm using here console one, as you see, just for the saturation is not used for anything else. Now the floor toms and said they really needed some EQ because they sound great in person in the room in front of the kit, but when you record them, they definitely needed some EQ. So this is how the first floor tom sounds with no EQ raw. Okay, I need some help. So there's a lot of uh, cardboard sound in like 400, 500 Hertz. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that first. Okay, we are about 900 here. Let's hear 600. There's all that we don't like. And again, if you wanna recenter 
one of the filters once you found it, or even if you want to kind of sweep around, you have the tone frequency here. You can see the shifts, the entire grid of all the filters. And uh, in this case, I was right. We are more uh, in the 400, 500 range. That's when, where the real card box is. Just going to cut this one out. It's better already, okay? There's still something more above that. Pay attention to these kind of frequencies because you start cutting too much of the tone uh, of, the, of the instrument. I think this one is still too much, so we're going to cut a little bit. Much better. Now we need top end on this. Let's try a wider bell. See, I, I'm not a fan of when I start hearing the EQ, right? If you boost the top end a little too low, you start hearing this kind of phasey effect. So I just tr really like to keep it a little higher than that. That's nice. That's nice. And I'm just gonna cut a little bit and cut a little bit of really low end. Let's keep it at 30. Now we need to reshape the low end here. We're probably gonna be right here around 60, maybe a little higher. Now oh, actually, I kind of like this 56, 58. That's good. I just wanna do, again, this push-pull trick and I'm gonna turn this off, see where it's at. It's a little too high. All right, let's grab that one that we don't really need. And now maybe we can turn this up a little. I think for this boost, I need to use the dynamic because if I keep the low end energy too much, the tail becomes too rumbly and in, I don't like it, but I do like a lot of low end in the, in the hit, in the first initial transit. So we can put the a positive ratio here again. And we have a more solid floor tom. From this. And if we remove both plugins, so we have the gate and the drum EQ. And we sound like this now. But again, both the drum EQ and the multiband gate are not just for drums. I know these two were born uh, out of kind of frustration and they wanted specific tools to help and make drum mixes better and faster. But in doing so, they created great plugins that can be used on vocals, bass, and full loops, even if you don't have the single drums like I do for this one. And the good news is if you wanna grab them, I have an exclusive 25% off code, Mixbus TV, for you guys, valid until March 31st. The code and the link is gonna be in the info box down below. I'll also write it here. And this is it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. If you have questions, leave them in the comment down below. Click the join button, become a member to access the exclusive content and get mixed consultations. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Stay safe. See you next time.